Hey everyone, welcome to MAB Rose. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming back. Thank you to all my old viewers, subscribers, supporters, passers by. Thanks for stopping by and I don't believe you're here by coincidence. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will minister to you with this message, that you will be catapulted forward to your next season and you'll be encouraged. And as the days go by, the Lord will use these words to speak directly to you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just before we get started on the message, I wanted to show you my pastor's book. It's called Glorious Garment and it was released on the 19th of July. Such an amazing revelatory book. I will leave the links below. I highly recommend you to get your copy. It is beautiful. It is based on the garments being for glory and for beauty. So we are not just looking at the surface of things, but we God always goes beyond the surface and it's always deeper than just a garment. So get your copy today. So today I wanted to speak to you about remembering your creator in your youth. And such a beautiful word that the Lord has given me today. So I'm really excited. Um, happy new month as well <laughs> august is a really special month for me personally this is my salvation month it's the year i have my birthday in christ and you know that i usually celebrate that and just encourage you with that because it's you know i see it as a way that the lord uses to minister onto people that celebrate jesus just celebrate him in all that you do and let his glory be found in everything that you're doing, you know, do things intentionally, hearing from God, making sure that you're hearing for, from God for things. And yeah, it's beautiful, but I'm so thankful. I mean, this month I told God I wanted to be really intentional about being really, really thankful, grateful, reflective, thinking about all the breakthroughs, thinking about how I don't even deserve to be here without his grace and mercy. I would not be here at all. Ha! Huh. without his love, without his word, without his plan for my life, I would not be here. And I'm so grateful for my salvation personally. Jesus just means everything to me. And I'm working at my salvation daily, as the Bible says, with fear and trembling. And the thing is, is that when you fall down, when you feel discouraged, you get dust yourself off and get back up. Don't stay there. Don't allow the enemy to infiltrate your thoughts. Don't allow the spirit of depression to sit on you. The power of God has to do something in your life. And there has to be miracles because that's the evidence of him in your life. Amen. Glory to God. So let's just get into the word today. And I'm looking first at Ecclesiastes 11. And we're looking at um, verse 9 to 10. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all these God will bring you into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. And the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are, dark, are not darkened and the clouds do not return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men bow down, when the grinders cease because they are few and those that look through the windows grow dim when the doors are shut in the streets and the sound of the grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of music are brought low. Also, they are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well. 
then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Hallelujah. So the book of Ecclesiastes, I do actually enjoy it because, um, I don't know, it's, it's so interesting to me, the philosophy behind it, you know, um, King Solomon and just his experiences, realizing that all are vanity. I just actually want to go to um, a different version because I really want to break this down and bring it close to home for you. And um, because all these, um, this is the New King James Version that I usually read from, but the Amplified will break it down a bit further because we shouldn't get caught up in our youth and think that we are going to be in our youth forever. What I want you to understand is that we are not just in the last days, we're in the end. And the Bible says that we shall walk circumspectly, Ephesians 5, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And then it speaks about wisdom being to know the will of the Lord. So we should be behaving as if we're running out of time. And I'm not saying rush around and look crazy, but be intentional about your relationship with Jesus because you don't know when you'll be called. The reality is, yes, you know, we are living out God's perfect will for our lives by the grace of God. We are walking step by step with Christ and we are trying to serve him. But, and we're believing for long life and we confess long life. But the reality is we don't know our last day on this earth. And I think that many have allowed the world to get into the church instead of the other way around, instead of allowing the spirit, instead of allowing the, the church to remain the church, many have allowed the world to get into the church. And there's this hybridity in church, you're, you're holy and outside of church, you're wild. And it's like, when are we going to come back to that place of the fear of God? The spirit of the fear of God is so missing in our generation. It's like, People do things that they know God doesn't want them to do without any reverence and regard for the holy things. And I remember um, Nehemiah and in the Bible and how he regarded the holy things and how he regarded the rebuilding of the temple and how he, he took it so sacredly and he took it not in a religious manner, but just having regard and respect for holy things is missing today. And you know, your beauty will fade. The Bible speaks about beauty, even beauty being vanity. And beauty is not a bad thing. The way I see it is that I can use my smile to bring people to Christ. I can use my beauty to encourage that smile, to encourage my facial expressions. Instead of using them for lust like I used to, I can use them to bring people to Christ, to encourage people, to exhort people, to uplift people. And it's like, there's this whole notion of, okay, everything else has failed. Let me, let me be a minister or, you know, it's not really working out for me. Let me just go and, because the church is there, you know, and there's this um kind of um assumption that the church is there so anybody can come in and go when they want to for their own convenience. But serving God is not about convenience. Your, your curves and, and, you know, the way that people are taking this these days is like all these things will fade. Even if you get plastic surgery, it will droop and drop one day. But what will you have to show for yourself when Jesus asks you what you've done with your gifts, your talents and the things that he has called you to do? So remember your creator. Let's just look at the Amplified. Let's just... Let's, you can bring out your Bibles and just read through this and, or just listen and even make notes and just reflect and think about this because, I mean, there's no use waiting. God has called you. There's no use waiting. You can use what you have now. You may not have so much money as a young person, but you can use what you have now. And I remember a time in my life when I had an encounter with Jesus when I was 20 years old. And he healed me. Um, he healed me. And I knew that, I mean, being raised as a Christian, I knew the presence of God in my life. And, and, and that's all great. But to actually have an experience with Christ, to, to know that, you know what, God is with me. That happened when I was age 20. 
And after he healed me, I really wish, I mean, I do wish that I had stayed the path and continued faithfully in him. Because what I do now is just, um, I'm led to do it, of course, but I, I wish I started earlier. That's what I'm trying to say. Because having an encounter with Christ and going back into the world or being lukewarm doesn't really make sense, you know. So when you start and you work for the Lord, working for the Lord is the best thing because he is a reasonable judge. He is a reasonable father that understands us and he is compassionate and he understands because he has faced all that we have faced and has come out of it without sin. So he he decides even our prosperity. Your job may decide your salary, but God decides what goes into your bank account. And when you seek him first, Matthew 6, 33, everything else will be added onto you. So Ecclesiastes 12 from the Amplified Version, remember thoughtfully also your creator in the days of your youth, for you are not your own but his. Before the evil days come, or the years draw near when you say of physical pleasures, I have no enjoyment and delight in them. We shouldn't wait before we're weak, before we say, oh, okay, I've done everything I wanted to do. Let me serve the Lord and give him my, my crumbs. Let's give him our best. Let's give him our first in everything, in, in finances, in energies, in, in the way that we dress for the things of God, in the effort and the energy we put into things of God with a smile. Let's give him our energy now. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened by impaired vision and the clouds of depression return after the rain of tears, in the day when the keepers of the house, hands, arms tremble and the strong men, feet, knees bow themselves and the grinders, molar teeth cease because they are few. So this is depicting a person getting older and those eyes who look through the windows grow dim when the doors lips are shut in the streets and the sound of the grinding of the teeth is low and one rises at the sound of a bird and the crowing of a rooster and all the daughters of music voice ears sing softly. Furthermore, they are afraid of a high place and of dangers on the road. The almond tree hair blossoms white and the grasshoppers, a little thing, is a burden. And the, and the capaberry, despite appetite, fails. For man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets and marketplaces. Earnestly remember your creator before the silver cord of life is broken or the golden bowl is crushed or the pitcher at the fountain is shattered and the wheel at the cistern is crushed then the dust out of which god's out of which god made man's body will return to the earth as it was and the spirit will return to god who gave it vanities of vanities says the preacher all that is done without god's guidance is vanity, futility. Amen. So remember your creator in your youth. Give him your best. Give him your now. You know, when a man wants to marry, when he's when he's in love, he wouldn't he, he he's, he's eager. He would he would rather want to give his best now, not give his best to his job or making money because where is your heart is a question. Where is the position of your heart? The heart is central to your ministry. So you have to ask yourself today, like, where is your heart? Because you can't be in two places. You can't serve money and serve God, you know? Nobody is saying be poor and serve God. No, put God first, put things in their rightful place. Do your job, do your work, that's great. But then put things in their rightful place and stop giving priority to things that will not benefit you in any way. All these parties, all these enjoyments and things like that. Yeah, you can go. I mean, Christians can go to, to certain places. You need to know why you're going to certain places and be spirit-led. Not going to clubs where the environment is demonic and the music that's playing is not going to edify your ministry or yourself in any way, shape or form. We need to invest 
in ourselves because when we invest in ourselves we're actually investing in other people and we're able to give back because you can't just become a christian that's just collecting blessings that is just not the way that it's supposed to be we need to look at the example of jesus and not just say oh well jesus has done it all no what jesus did was the start of it and jesus did a mighty work and he said in his word that we will do more than what he's done and we can see that he was powerful he was too powerful you know and i believe that we can grow to learn from his example and look to him that he didn't just keep the power of god to himself and collect blessings to himself you know but he actually went and served he went and served people and to be first you must be last to lead you have to serve you can't expect people to do things that you cannot do yourself we need to be able to set an example so um, 2 Chronicles 34, 1, let's look in the life of some young people in the Bible and let's, let's look at what it says about youth a little bit. Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. I remember reading this for the first time and being like, eight years, wow, eight years old. <laughs> Verse two, so we're back in the King James, New King James Version. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father, David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. For in the eighth, eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images and the molded images. They broke down the altars of the bowels in his presence and the incense altars which were above them he cut down and the wooden images, the carved images and the moulded images he broke in pieces and made dust of them and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He also burned the bones of the priests on their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. And so he did in the cities of Manasseh, Erephim, and Simeon, as far as Naphtali, and all around with axes. When he had broken down the altars and the wooden images, he had beaten the carved images into powder and cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. Amen. So we see... Josiah was eight and he reigned for 31 years, but he had energy to do the work of the Lord. God has a plan for you and he has a purpose for you in your youth. And we see in the Bible how the people always went to turn back, almost always going back to idols. And we have modern day idols today. Friendships can be an idol, friendship groups, the influence of friends, not wanting to be alone, not wanting to be different. Because the pressure that comes with being different, the pressure that comes with being set apart, the warfare that comes with being different, it's not easy. Not everybody wants to stand, stick out like a sore thumb. But you have to be able to make that sacrifice because Jesus did it. Jesus went before you and Jesus is our perfect example of what leadership should look like. So Josiah was able to put his energy into doing the work of the Lord and he was able to give his best. The Bible says that we should give ourselves wholly to the things of God. We should give our all. We're going to look at that verse soon. But we should, we should give. We should give our all. And I find it really interesting that Josiah was able to do that. And I think it's, it's, it, should, it should tell us something because imagine the amount of training that went into that. The ability to be able to do that which... Maybe not, not many, I didn't see many people, but when we look into the Bible, even the disciples, they were children. That's what many people don't understand because the films depict them as men. But the disciples, they were children. They were children, they were young. David, young. All these prophets, you know, young. So there's a misconception that the work of the Lord is for mature people and older people. Yes, grow into that. Grow into that person that started young and continued along the way. But the thing is, is that when you don't become at the time you're supposed to become and you leave it too long and you delay it too long, you start to become very strange. You become just odd, like no one can place you. You become like some hybrid, weird creature. 
that's just still in church and is hanging around but then you involve yourself in gossip and you involve yourself in confusion and you're one way outside it's like this this hypocrisy you know and hypocrisy that word means acting you know and it's an it used to be used for the you know describing um drama or acting you know different faces disloyalty confusion you know because people are not becoming because they think they have time because they think they're too young they want to use their talents for the world they want to use their looks for the world there's nothing out in this world left for you there's nothing what, what is it going to do for you jesus is the answer and it's the only answer and it's that thing that you're running from which is the thing that will save you let's look at jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 10 then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were formed, you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth for you shall go to all whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put the words in your mouth. See, I have set this day. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You see, before God called him, he knew that he was a youth. So it's like sometimes we tell God things that are obvious to God. He's like, okay, I, I know that you're a youth. I, I, I made you. I, I'm the one that plans your life. Hello. <laughs> I am God alone, you know. So I find it so interesting, you know. And I do love this because God reassures Prophet Jeremiah that I, I, I'm with you. I formed you. I've got a plan for you. This is what the plan is. I want to use you for greater good. You are my child. And I don't know if you're discouraged about stepping out on faith for God, but it gets to a point where it's like, it's something that you have to force to do. If I didn't give my life to Christ at the age of 23, I don't know where I would be today because I just saw my life falling apart and I knew that God was the answer. At least I had that foundation, um, that backing, that experience as a child, knowing that, okay, God is real. I can feel him when I'm, pre when I'm preaching, when I'm... <laughs> When I'm singing in my room, when I'm dancing, when I'm going to church, I know that this is real. And thankfully, I have that to, to fall back on. It gets but to it a just, point where give your life to Christ and serve him fully or, or perish. Because really, there's a calling on your life and it's just dangerous to be outside of that for too long. And I do feel I left it long, but I, I am thankful that God snatched me up when he did. Because for real i would just be completely lost let's look at 1 timothy chapter 4 verse 12 to 16. i do love this in my quiet time i was just like hallelujah god like the revelation i was just like yes lord so let's read this let's read this and let's let's just break this down it says let no one despise your youth and i just why do why is youth despised why do we think youth is despised well youth is despised because one that sees you as somebody that is inexperienced culturally in some places you know children are not supposed to give their parents eye contact you know children are to be seen but not heard that's a quite an, an old english um phrase that has been i think it's i believe it's a victorian phrase to be seen and not heard keep quiet and do what you're supposed to do you're in the way you're inconveniencing me you don't know anything shush read your books go to school and that's it but there's more to life for a child um and the, it's amazing because it's, it's really amazing because the bible jesus actually tells us that we have to be like little children and have the humility of a child and i know that youth and childhood is are quite different I'm kind of linking them together because it's, it's ministering to me somehow that those ways that are frowned upon uh, in a youth being inexperienced and, you know, just, yeah, children should or youth, young people should listen to their parents and their caregivers. But sometimes, you know, you're seen as because you're relying on someone, you're kind of seen as like, you know, what do you know? But God can use a child. I've heard 
parents in the Lord saying that their children have ministered to them in certain ways and have made comments and that has really spoken to them. If a child is full of the Holy Spirit, which they should be, I mean, from before you're even conceiving, you should be praying for your child, that your child will be born into the ways of the Lord and will serve the Lord and will receive the Holy Spirit as soon as they are conceived and be born and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've seen children even speaking in tongues and that shouldn't be a, a shock to people. You dedicate your child to the Lord when the child is born and that's it. You keep praying over that child and believing that they will become the man or woman of God that God has called them to be. But youth can be despised and that's why it says let no one despise your youth because youth can be looked down upon. When David, the shepherd boy, was called, he was young and he looked inexperienced. He just looked like a shepherd boy looking after sheep. What can you do? But it is God that decides and it is God that the Holy Spirit in a person, if you've received the Holy Spirit, it is God that moves within a person. It's not by what we see because God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at the outward. He looks at the heart of the person. So let's read on. But be an example but be an example to the believers. So it's the believers that will receive that example. And it says in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And it's possible to be these things as a young person in this world where, you know, youth is about image, uh, plastic surgery, looks, I don't even know anymore where the youth is going if we look because Matthew 9.36 speaks about how Jesus was moved to compassion because he he says that the people were sheep without a shepherd and there's just so many broken relationships, so many broken homes. But he was moved to compassion, but he the, the compassion moved him to teach them. He it moved them to move Jesus to do something about it. He wasn't just upset about it, but it moved him to to do something, to teach them. And in teaching, the Bible speaks about when teaching has, has, has been taking place, healing, the power of the Holy Spirit provides healing as the teaching is going on. So it's believers that, you, that, that will be able to pick up on your example. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourselves entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen. And a key thing that I notice here is that you will save yourself. It, it speaks about the saving of yourself first. When you're focused on the ways of the Lord, it saves you from the nonsense that is in this world. It distracts you away from the distractions, from what the enemy is trying to do in your life. We are victorious in Christ. But when you're focused on silly things, immature things, things that don't deserve any attention, it doesn't help. And it, it makes you form into something that you're not called to be. There's no time left for foolishness. We are in the end. We're in the last days, the end of the last days. We need to rise up it doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter how many times you've fallen down god is ready to receive you back and he can still use you regardless just read here james 4 verse 13 come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city spend a year there buy and sell and make a profit whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appears for a little time then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So let's not think that we have forever because we look good and we can take beautiful selfies or we have long hair. You know, you might have a big bum, you might have a big breasts. God has blessed you with your beautiful features, but I mean, your breasts, your bum, your looks, they're not gonna they bring souls. And if you're bringing souls to church like that, they're the wrong kind of souls and they're looking for the wrong thing. <laughs> Let's be serious about what God has called us to do because you're not, at the end of the day, it's not all that. 
you're not all that you think that you are. I am not all that I thought I was because I had to rely, because if I was, I don't need Jesus. If I'm all that, I can do it on my own. I don't need Jesus, but I'm not all that. I'm not the prettiest, I'm not the best. I just need the grace of God in my life to get by because I cannot get by without the grace of God. So it's not all that, okay, you're not all that. And God doesn't really need you because if you're not gonna rise up, he's gonna use someone else and he will, and he will get the glory and he has to get the glory and he will get the glory. So please, it's not by force. You don't have to do the work of the Lord. It's something that you should do with love in your heart. It's not something that you should do with force because it's not by might or by, by your own strength, but it's by the spirit of the God. And remember, John 6, 63 says it's that the flesh profits nothing, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. So it's not about you. It's about the spirit. And it's a beautiful, it's, an, it's actually an honor to serve the Lord. It's actually an honor to remember the creator in your youth because it's beautiful when I see young people that love the Lord and that are not distracted by these petty, petty things in the world that God can do for you so easily. God can easily bless you with the car, the house, the husband, the wife, the things that the world is striving for. The world, they don't need to pray before they get their riches. So why are you struggling? Why do you feel that you need to kind of struggle and force? All you need to do is put God first and he makes everything convenient for you. You would be amazed at the grace on your life, the protection and the covering, the angelic presence. When you do the work of God, God has your back. It's like you don't even see it coming. It's like he just irons things out for you. Not to say that there are no challenges, not to say that there's no warfare, because if you are not doing anything for God, then there will not be anything chasing you that you would be on the side of the, the demons if you're having it easy then there's a problem and if everybody likes you then there's a problem because well you know you're not aggravating any demons you're not against the enemy so then what are you doing you're not supposed to be liked and embraced by everybody even in your church don't be surprised the bible speaks about divisions in the church the bible speaks about the loveless church it's all in the word of god so i just want to encourage you and Let's just, let's just look at Jesus when he was young. Remember the Lord now, not when you're struggling. I mean, it, it shouldn't be one day you're this, the next day you're that. One day you're believing God for something and then you have a plan B. Let's get rid of the plan B and make God our number one plan. Don't say that, oh, don't give God time for the beloved, for your, for your husband, wife to come and say if it doesn't come by this date then i'm going back into the world don't do that because you don't know what you're going back to because in this world we don't even know who's male and female anymore we don't know who is even human anymore so what are you going back to exactly because that person that you're going back to could actually be a demon we don't know anymore because we've really reached the point where it's like i don't even know anymore it's like people are morphing into all kinds of things so what are you even going back to is either you believe god but as for me and my house as the bible says we will serve the lord i will serve the lord whoever in my family doesn't want to come with me it's okay it's your loss because jesus is amazing the word of god is alive and active and it's sharper than any double-edged sword and it shows you the intentions of the heart. It pierces the bone, the marrow. So we have something so good. And it's like, are you really gonna let it pass you by? Let's look at Luke chapter two, verse 41. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting at the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? 
look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Do, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Amen. So it's like, as I mentioned, you know, when you're a youth, when you're a young person, when you're a child, there's an expectation to follow your parents. But Jesus was spiritual. He was following his father's business. He was doing, he was being led by his spirit and he didn't understand why his parents didn't understand. And that is very deep, actually. It's very deep. And we should be able to learn something from this. He was even about his father's business in his youth, in his, in his young days. And he was being intentional about getting that information because it's information that influences your faith. If you don't have any information, then you don't have faith. And faith is like um, doubt because when you have doubt, you put more influence in what, or you, you have information about what the devil is saying to you. And then that's how you form your doubt. But I have chosen to doubt less and to have faith in God. I, I don't want to deal with doubt. If I'm doubting, I need to sort that out with the word of God and I need to not stay in that place of doubt because we are called to have faith and the just shall live by faith. So in all of this, you have to have faith and not care about what people think about you. Your friendship group, sometimes they need to go. Sometimes you need to be okay without people that are a fan club to you. You can be okay without them. You can live without them. It's okay. You don't need that. So I pray you're encouraged today, guys. And, and, and I just want to say, if any of you are watching this and you have not given your life to Christ, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. And next year, I'll be so next year, next month, ne <laughs> next week, I will be celebrating eight years after dedication to Christ. Um, and I'm so grateful for, I mean, I, what can I say? God is so good. God is so good. All you need to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. Pray and ask God to come into your life. Say after me, only if you mean it. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me so that I could have a relationship with you. I renounce the evil. I no longer live for the devil. I live for Jesus Christ today. Father, I will live for you. I will get to know you. I will read your word and I will stay in you. Give me the grace. Give me the strength. Give me the wisdom and understanding to stay with you in this evil world, to do mighty exploits for you, O oh God. Thank you for this special opportunity to give my life to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Best decision that you could ever make. Don't turn back. Because all that's behind you is the enemy. All that's behind you is your past and all, all the lies and all the mistakes and everything. Move forward in progress. Forwards ever and backwards never. Don't worry. The loss that you've experienced for God, he will give you even more than you had before. I'll just pray for the rest of you. Father, thank you for your word. Oh God, you're so good. You're so faithful. Your name is faithful and true. And I worship you today. Father, I pray for your precious people listening. I, I pray that this word spoke to them. I pray that this was a timely word for them. I pray that this will change them, oh God. This is not just a performance. This is not about me. This is about you. This is for you and it's for your people. Let them understand that. The youth is not a time to hide away, but it's a time to serve you, to love you, to give you their everything. Let this bring a change upon anyone's life under the sound of my vo voice. Oh God, encourage your people. Let them know that it's, good to, it's a good thing to serve the Lord. It's a good thing to attempt great things for the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.